All right, let's talk Proxmox Backup Server. You get it all set up, you're excited for this amazing, powerful tool, and then it just crawls. The backups take forever, the setup feels like it's never gonna end. Well, today, we're gonna change that. We're gonna take that frustratingly slow server and turn it into an absolute performance beast with just a handful of really smart tweaks. So, does this sound familiar? You're staring at the screen, watching a data store initialize, and it feels like you could, I don't know, go make a sandwich, watch a movie, and come back and it's still not done. Or maybe your nightly backups are still chugging along when you're making your morning coffee. If you felt that pain, trust me, you are not alone. It's so easy to think you've messed something up, but stick with me here because there is a much, much better way. Okay, here's the game plan. We're going to dive into the real speed problem with PBS, talk about making smarter storage choices, look at some tricks for faster operations, uncover a nasty performance trap, and then wrap it all up with a real-world verdict on whether you actually need to do any of this. So first things first, let's get this out of the way. If your Proxmox backup server is slow, it's probably not you. It's the defaults. See, the out-of-the-box settings are built for, you know, maximum compatibility, not maximum speed. It's kind of like a new car that's stuck in eco mode. Sure, it'll get you there, but you're leaving a ton of performance on the table. All right, now this right here, this is the big one. Seriously, if you only remember one thing today, make it this. Your choice of file system and how you lay out your storage, that is the absolute foundation of a speedy backup server. You get this part right, right from the very beginning, and I'm telling you, you've already won half the battle. So to understand why this matters so much, you gotta know how Proxmox Backup Server thinks. It doesn't just save one big file. No, it chops your backups into tiny little chunks and then squirrels them away in a just a massive directory structure. We're talking over 65,000 directories. And the standard file system, ext4, it just, it chokes on that. It wasn't built for it. But ZFS or XFS, oh yeah, they were made for this kind of chaos. They handle it without even breaking a sweat, which makes them the clear, undisputed winner here. And hey, if you do decide to go with ZFS, which you probably should, here are a couple of pro tips to really kick things into high gear. First, you're going to want to set the record size to one megabyte. This just lines up the file system perfectly with how PB stores its chunks. It's a small change that makes a huge difference. And second, this one's key if you're using old school spinning hard drives, add a little mirrored NVMe drive as a special device. This basically tells ZFS, hey, all the important map data, the metadata, put that on the super fast drive. It's literally like giving your backup server a triple shot of espresso. Speaking of those hard drives, your RAID setup is another huge piece of the puzzle. You've got RAID-Z, which is awesome for getting the most storage space, but Proxmox backup server doesn't really care about that. What it craves is speed for tons of tiny little operations, and that is where RAID 10 is the absolute king. Yeah, you give up a little bit of storage space, but what you get back is that raw IOPS performance that your backup server desperately needs. All right, so our storage foundation is rock solid. Now let's build on top of that. I've got a couple of super smart tweaks for the actual operations that'll save you a ridiculous amount of time, both when you're setting things up and for your daily backups. You know how when you first create a data store, it sits there for what feels like an eternity? Well, that's because by default, it's meticulously creating all 65,000 of those directories up front. It's painful. But check this out, there's a magic flag, dash no preallocation true. This tells PBS to be lazy, but like in a genius way. It just says, hey, don't worry about making the directories until a backup actually needs one. And just like that, your data store setup time goes from potentially hours down to seconds. No joke. Okay, so now that we're being lazy with our directory creation, we can take advantage of it. The best way to speed up that very first backup is to just throw more workers at the problem, run more jobs in parallel. You can add a little flag like jobs for, or just bump up the concurrency right in your Proxmox VE settings. It's simple, really. Instead of one person creating directories one by one as they go, you've got four people doing it all at once. It's like having a whole team packing boxes instead of just one guy. Everything just moves way, way faster. Okay, I need you to pay close attention to this next one. We need to talk about a piece of advice that is everywhere online. You'll see it on forums, old blog posts, everywhere. And on the surface, it sounds like a great idea for a speed boost, but for Proxmox backup server specifically, it's a trap, a really dangerous one. I bet you've seen this, right? The old advice to just add no time to your mount options. The logic seems solid. 
Why would you want the system to waste precious time updating a timestamp every single time a file is just read? It feels like wasted effort. And for a lot of things, it is. But for Proxmox Backup Server, it is a massive trap. Seriously, whatever you do, do not do this. So here's why it's such a big deal. It turns out Proxmox Backup Server relies on those access times. It's how it figures out which data chunks are still in use and which ones it can safely throw away during garbage collection. So if you turn a time off, you completely break that system. Your retention policy goes out the window, you could end up keeping junk data forever, or even worse, it might delete stuff it shouldn't. The safe solution, the right way to do it, is to use real time instead. It gives you almost all of the performance boost without, you know, breaking the most important part of your backup system. Okay, so we've gone through all these awesome ways to supercharge your server, but let's get real for a second. Does everybody need to do all of this? Is this absolutely mandatory? And the honest answer is, well, it depends. It's a bit more nuanced than that. Check out this quote from a user. This person basically says, look, I broke every single rule you just mentioned. I'm backing up to a slow NAS over the network, but you know what? It all runs at night while I'm asleep, so I just don't care. And they've got a great point. Sometimes good enough is genuinely good enough. If it's just cold storage and the job gets done, speed might not be your number one priority. But, and this is a big but, when you do need that performance, oh, you really need it. We're talking that 3 a.m. emergency restore of a critical server, or when you're managing backups for an entire business. In those moments, a tuned system isn't a nice to have. It's an absolute necessity. And the payoff for getting it right is, well, it's huge. Let me just show you what that payoff actually looks like. Here's a real world scenario. Someone took a 200 gigabyte virtual machine and backed it up every single night for an entire year. So that's 365 separate backups. The question is, how much space do you think all of that took on a properly tuned system? Just one and a half terabytes, that's it. I mean, that is an absolutely incredible level of efficiency. Now think about that. Without the magic of Proxmox's deduplication, that same set of backups would have been a staggering 73 terabytes. That is the difference we're talking about. That's the power of setting this stuff up correctly. And really, that brings us to the core idea here. This isn't stuff you have to fiddle with every day or every week. This is about a small, one-time investment of your time and attention up front. You tune it right just once, and then you get to reap the rewards of a fast, super efficient, and reliable backup system pretty much forever. You can just sleep better at night. So, as we finish up, I just want to leave you with one question to chew on. Take a hard look at your own backup setup. Is it just working? Or is it working for you? Is it saving you time? Is it saving you precious storage space? Is it giving you real peace of mind? The difference between those two things? Well, it's all in the details we just went over.